Hello, I am Faith Gideon from Mrs. Lang's A Block Human Anatomy class. And today we're going to be doing yoga to demonstrate our body's different joints and how they move. We're going to start by stretching our hinge joints, which we have in our elbows and our knees. So hinge joints have the opportunity to be able to move in flexion and extension. So this joint in our elbow connects the humerus, ulna, and radius when you move it into extension and flexion. And in our knees, it connects the femur and the tibia when we move it to extension and flexion. Next, we're gonna be stretching some pivot joints. One of the pivot joints we'll be stretching lies here. It's the radial ulnar joint, which lies just below the elbow, which connects to the distal joint of the ulnus and the radius. So these joints can move in pronation and supination. Supination is like this, pronation is like this. So, in order to move this joint, the base of the radius rotates over and around the head of the ulna. The ulna doesn't twist, only the radius does. So when you do that, it looks kind of like this, and you can definitely feel the stretch right here. Now we're going to look at our ball and socket joint, which does a lot of the movement. Specifically, we're going to be looking at our glenomial joint, aka the shoulder joint, which, as far as the bones go, our humerus fits into the scapula, allowing this joint to move in flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, rotation, and circumduction. And it's really important to do this in both arms to get the full stretch in yoga. Now we're going to stretch an ellipsoid joint known as the radiocarpal joint, also, you know, the wrist. So in this joint, the group of carpal bones rotates inside the socket of the radius. Ellipsoid joints allow us to move in a bunch of different directions, but for this movement, we're going to be stretching it through circumduction. So it kind of looks like this. You can hear your wrists crack, and it's super good to do this. Now moving along the wrist, we get to a joint known as the carpal metacarpal joint of the thumb, which connects the metacarpal bone of your thumb. This joint allows us to flex and extend, stretching to look like this, and also allowing us to give a thumbs up to people. Lastly, we're going to be stretching the acroclavicular joint, which lies between the clavicle and the acromion process at the scapula. In order to stretch it, you simply raise your shoulders. You can see the joint glide or rotate in order to keep the scapula vertical. Now, next time you're doing yoga or simply stretching before a game, you can understand your joints and the movements you're doing in order to stretch them for your game and the purpose behind them. So remember, stay at peace and know your joints.